Hey pilots, Drain Man here. Today I have a very special video. Today we are going to learn how to put OpenTX on our computer. If you have a Tyrannus remote or any other remote that uses the OpenTX firmware, you're going to need to have this firmware on your computer. Not the firmware, you're going to need the software on your computer so that you can do things with the firmware on your radio. So today we're going to learn how to put that in and today is going to start the beginning of a series of all about how to do this kind of stuff with your Tyrannus. There are tons of videos on it, so I'm not trying to replace those videos I'm just trying to get you something a little more updated all right so to begin this series the very first video is going to be putting the software on your computer once you have it then we'll move into the Tyrannus all right pilots so one of the very first things we need to do is we need to have things organized for this part you're gonna need a folder I'm gonna show you guys now go ahead and click on your documents if that's where you want to put it and create a folder called FPV as you see I have done here and I've got everything that's FPV related that I might need to have I have it all organized and set up and ready to go I want you to right click hit new click new folder and we are going to call it open TX all right, once you have that saved, then you're ready for the next step. All right, pilot, so the first thing you need to do is open up your browser. Once you have your browser open, you need to go to open-tx.org forward slash downloads. I'm going to link that website URL down in the video description. Once you have done that, we are going to need to download the actual firmware. There is actually brand new firmware for OpenTX came out as the 2.2.4. There are quite a few changes in it. It's not too much. You can look at the release notes if you want to. So I want you to go ahead and click on this and we're going to go ahead and download this. This is all the notes and changes that have happened. They're letting you know all the kind of stuff. They're giving you the warnings, any known issues, and all the main changes. So go ahead and scroll down until you get to OpenTX 2.2.4 and I'm running Windows. For any reason you are not, you're going to have to use this, but I don't even know how to do that because I like Windows. Click on that, and it's going to begin downloading as you see down in the bottom left-hand corner. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and open it up. My screen did black out, and that's only because it's opening up asking me if it wants, you know, it's my antivirus saying, hey, are you sure you want to run this? We don't know if we trust this. Let us know if you trust it. Agree to it. We want to select the components to install, and it is the companion, so hit next. All right, so now it's ready. It's going to pick the folder. It's going in program files. Go ahead and hit next, and then it is going to do its deal. Hit install. And as you can see, it installed pretty quick. I did not speed that up. So now that it's done, we're going to go ahead and hit finish, and it's going to go ahead and run the companion. All right, so there she is. She has opened up, and she is live on the computer, and we are ready to rock and roll. All right, pilots. Now that we have OpenTX on our computer, and it is the latest firmware, it just came out, I don't know, maybe a month ago not even so now that we have the latest hottest firmware out it's on our computer we're ready to rock and roll there are a few things you're going to need i'm going to go over that with you now if you've already been set up and you are set up and you're running lewis scripts and all that stuff then you can skip these parts uh the later videos will go into more in depth and we'll learn more cool stuff but as far as for this video for the beginners who are just learning i want you to go ahead and Pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. I'm about to show you some really important stuff. All right, guys, so you're going to need these things. So go ahead and let's head back over to the computer. All right, here we are. We're dived back in. So what I want you to do is go ahead and go into Amazon.com. All I did was search micro SD card. And as you can see, they're popping up all over the place. There's tons of them. And they're dirt cheap too. Well, unless you want a 400 gig, then they're expensive. So for what you need an SD card for is your Tyrannus. So whether you have a QX7 or an X9D, whatever it is, you do not want to go with something small like a 4 gig or a 2 gig. And yes, they do make them, but you do not want that. You also do not need a 500 gig card. So a 32 would be fine. A 64 would be more than enough. I think even a 16 would be great. So if we could find, look, here you go. Here's two 16s 
for 10 bucks. So you really can't beat it. You can throw one in your goggles and throw one in your Tyrannus and you're good to go for 10 bucks. So you are going to need this SD card, so please go ahead and get one if you don't already have it. The very next thing you're going to need is you are going to need a USB cord. And my Tyrannus did not come with one, maybe yours did. So what you need is you need a USB cord. You need one side to be USB and you need the other side to be what's called a B. You can see the B right here. That is what you need. You need this cord. And what this does is this cord allows you to be able to connect your Tyrannus directly to the computer. If you have an old PlayStation laying around or an old Xbox, this cord is probably on it and you can use it. Now, this thing is only $4.80, so I don't want to hear any whining about cost. So, all together, we got two cards and a cord for $15. Bucks. And if you're a Prime member, then you're not paying for shipping, and you'll have it in two days. All right, pilots, so that's going to do it for the first video. I'm super excited. We are on our way. Stay tuned. I appreciate you guys for tuning, and I'll see you on the next one.